Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Aisha Subarkar. Separated by thousands of kilometers on the opposite ends of Asia, Turkey and China do not look like natural energy partners. Both being net importers of oil and gas, the areas where they could cooperate on fossil fuels seem minimal. But when it comes to renewable energy and the rare earth minerals that power modern industries, the areas for cooperation are starting to show. That potential was on full display during Turkey's Minister of Energy and Natural Resources, Alparslan Bayraktar's visit to Beijing. Bayraktar cut a preliminary deal on what officials are dubbing energy transition. One of the most promising areas includes cooperation on nuclear power and renewables. Currently, Turkey is constructing the Akkuyu nuclear plant with the help of Russia. But Ankara has plans to build two more, and a Chinese company is in the running to build a nuclear plant in Turkey's Tres region. Another crucial area the two sides touched on was rare earth minerals. Two years ago, Ankara announced the discovery of the world's second largest rare earth reserves, second only to China. And to discuss the potential for energy cooperation between Turkey and China, joining me now from Istanbul is Taha Mediarvas. He is the CEO of Energy Exchange Istanbul. And from Beijing, Einar Tangen. He's a political and economic affairs analyst. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Einar, when you look at the two countries, they don't seem like natural energy partners. They're thousands of kilometers apart and both want to tap the uh, energy-rich countries uh, in Central Asia, but send that energy in opposite directions. So the question is, which areas can they cooperate when it comes to energy? Well, China has all the technology and the equipment in order to extract. They have uh, all the piping and things like this uh, to get it going both ways. I mean, China's uh, whole foreign policy is based on this idea of a shared future. So that means that uh, they are willing to do things uh, that would not necessarily happen uh, if other countries were involved. They really do believe that peace comes through trade. And so, you know, you can expect more of this, not only with Turkey, but any other country that wants to be part of the Belt and Road and wants to improve the future for its people. Mm. So, Taha, what are the shared interests uh, of Turkey and China when it comes to our cooperation on renewable energy? And how much uh, potential is there, you think? I think there's a lot of potential. Uh, Turkey is a market that I think is, is great for uh, both China, uh, the private sector and public sector in China. Uh, Turkey has a ever-increasing appetite for energy, unlike many other European countries that are either stagnant or slowing down. Uh, so not, not only is it, is it a good market, but also it's, it's, a, uh, uh, it's part of the, uh, the belt, the, the road and uh, uh, belt initiative, uh, and it's uh, a, a crossroads for both Asia and, and Turkey, and as a result, uh, will help both deliver energy um, uh, that's produced in Turkey to other markets, as well as for uh, Turkey's own consumption within the country. So, so Einar, negotiations between Ankara and Beijing have been ongoing uh, uh, for the construction of a nuclear power plant in the northwestern region uh, of Turkey, the Thrace. So uh, how close are both countries to reaching a deal on that matter? And if signed, what impact would that have on both country relations? Well, I, I don't know ex the exact details of how it is, but I mean, China doesn't go into things frivolously. They don't uh, put out frameworks. Uh, they tend to concentrate on the main uh, idea. Uh, obviously, it's something in terms of a renewable uh, energy, or at least a much cheaper energy, uh, much cleaner. Uh, and uh, this is something that uh, you know China and Turkey both need. I mean, China has. Uh, the most number of nuclear reactors um, being built, as built, used. Uh, they have an internal consumption figure of around 5% of their total energy needs. Uh, and Turkey can benefit from that. They have mm -hmm. a 3.5 uh, reactor, which is uh, very, uh, very quick, uh, very efficient, and a lot less dangerous than the old ones, like in Fukushima and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they have um, you know, the will, uh, as my uh, colleague had said, they're part of the Belt and Road, and geopolitically, also very, very important. It's going to have ramifications abroad. Obviously, the United States will not like it. So, Taha, in 2022, Turkey said it discovered the world's second largest deposits of uh, rare earth minerals. China, as we know, is the world leader in this. And many at that time said that discovery would 
somehow challenge uh, Beijing dominance uh, in these minerals. So there's a, now there is a talk of cooperation on this. So how would that look like? Well, China is uh, probably a decade ahead of everyone globally when it comes to the processing of rare earth minerals. Um, this is something that's you know not very uh, not a, not a secret. Even the F-35 fighter jet um, uh, that the United States is producing uses uh, minerals that are uh, from China because of this ability, this capability rather, uh, to process uh, rare earths. So um, in that in that respect, it's important for countries that need uh, that want to uh, expand their use of renewables um, with the use of these rare earth minerals uh, to work with China. I think this is a uh, this is a technology that China has so far been, in fact, recently um, uh, hesitant to, to share, frankly. Mm -hmm. But I think the time has come for it to uh, bring other countries uh, up to speed um, so that it can uh, cooperate with them and it can enjoy uh, the fruits of these uh, discoveries. So, Anna, what do you think? I mean, considering how costly and technically uh, refining rare uh, earth metals are, would China, as um, Taha mentioned, be willing to share that know-how and invest in uh, Turkey's rare earth sector? Well, as I was saying before, Asha, I mean, this is a situation where China is very, very different. If we were talking about Europe, the United States, they would insist that uh, you just ship the rare earths to them and they, uh, they would uh, refine it. Uh, China could, in essence, do the same thing, but they're not. There's, they really do believe that unless, if you want a shared future for uh, mankind, you have to share technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people who've said that if those who own the IP will be served by those who don't, you do not want to set up another world where there's inequalities between individuals and countries. We've had enough of that. That model doesn't work. So right now, China is putting, you know, it's walking to walk. It's, it's not just saying that we want to share. They are actually doing it. They did that uh, with um, the, uh, the vaccines during COVID-19, and they're continuing to do it. Uh, whether it's nuclear power or rare earths, they do believe that the world has to work together for a better future. So, um, Taha, Turkey has ambitious uh, goals to become a global energy hub. Would cooperation uh, with China help contribute to that, or is it separate, like considering how far away uh, China is? I think it, it absolutely is a, a very uh, real possibility. I was part of the delegation that went with the Minister of Energy uh, and Natural Resources to Beijing. Um, while there, I, I went on to Shanghai to the uh, Petroleum and Gas Exchange in Shanghai, the Shanghai Petroleum and Gas Exchange. And we discussed uh, ways of cooperating because ultimately, um, as the CEO of EPH, the Istanbul Energy Exchange, uh, we, we are the registrar of, of, uh, of many of these transactions. Um, and we look to cooperate with them. Uh, so even if we have uh, many thousands of miles between us, companies that want to trade for physical delivery or financial, uh, or, or uh, in a financial sense, can choose to trade on our platform um, uh, from China or Turkish companies who want to trade uh, for delivery in China can do the same on their platform. So uh, there are many avenues of cooperation, of collaboration, and we're looking forward to um, exploring what they could be, and I think there is uh, going to be a long uh, and successful uh, period of cooperation in the near future. So, Einar, uh, China has reportedly invested $890 billion in uh, clean energy only last year, so that was nearly equal to total uh, global investments in fossil fuel supplies in 2023. So the question is, how much potential is there for China to expand its global investments in renewable energy? And could Turkey be a prime market uh, for that, given the strides it had made both in wind and solar energy? Well, China is far ahead of anyone in the world in terms of mass production. I mean, they, the, the cost factor is there. Uh, China can produce at a much less cost. Uh, and this is worrying uh, the developed world to insist that people should uh, be willing to pay more to transition to a green energy source, despite the fact that they, you know, they're the ones who are always saying that we need to transition as soon and as quickly and as cheaply as possible. So there's a double standard there. Uh, what China can offer Turkey is the technology. Uh, it, obviously, it's a, in some instances, it's going to make more sense to have factories in uh, Turkey to co cover the region. 
uh, but that will be a lot of that will be up to private enterprises uh, and it, just how attractive the uh, the market is. Obviously, Turkey has uh, plenty of labor. Um, it's situated in a key area. It will be a lot easier to export to uh, Europe and America if you're in Turkey as opposed to in China. So, uh, since 2014, the European Union and China have cooperated on the design and implementation of China's carbon market. Is a similar uh, mechanism being set up between Turkey and China? That's another avenue that we uh, discussed while I was in Shanghai. I think that's um, that carbon market uh, is uh, currently by law uh, going to take place in our exchange that I'm uh, the uh, CEO of. And so we discussed how we can um, move forward in this respect, because China as the largest, I mean, not only is it the largest uh, green energy source, but it's also um, the largest uh, emitter of carbon, uh, not the largest, but one of the largest uh, emitter of carbon as it is. So they have a very uh, important role in helping offset those emissions. Uh, so I think that's one of their goals, and, and it's a goal that we share. So I know, like uh, Europe, Turkey's energy security can be disrupted by uh, conflicts, whether in Ukraine or the Middle East. And China's energy security is also uh, vulnerable due to heightened tensions uh, with the U.S. over Taiwan. So it, how much of a risk is there for the safe flow of energy and minerals uh, through these uh, geographical conflicts? Well, I mean, these types of conflicts are no win situation. I mean, uh, this, the same things that bring uh, the same ships that bring uh, oil and uh, gas to China are the same ships uh, that are shipping out cheaper goods that are necessary to prevent inflation. They're also the ones that are shipping out the rare earths uh, that, that need to be used in critical uh, materials and things like this. So there's no winner in conflict. Uh, the issue is how to prevent them. Uh, China has been a steady voice in the Middle East, uh, if they're trying in Ukraine, to bring these uh, conflicts to an end, as is Turkey, uh, who plays an important regional role and international role in trying to bring together parties that don't trust each other. And that's really what we're lacking here, is this trust. This is what's leading to these con conflicts. In terms of the actual effects, uh, they'd be catastrophic but not only for China, but for the entire world. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.